Using bendy bones are a great way to get some really cartoony animation. But did you know there's a better setup that you could be using to really push your animation even further? I'm talking about rig stacking. A setup that consists of multiple bendy bone rigs that are stacked on top of each other, giving us this robust and flexible setup. Now this video was inspired by a recent tutorial made by Southern Shotty, so if you haven't seen the original, I'll leave a link down below so you can check it out. Anyway, back to the video. The first thing that we need to create is a simple three bone chain setup. So I'm going to press Shift A and add a single bone. Tab into edit mode and make this bone as big as you need it. This will be our main bendy bone. We need to make three other bones to control this, one at the top and one at the bottom. So for the bottom control, I'm going to press Shift D and I'm just going to bring the tail down slightly. The main thing here is we need it to be aligned to our original bendy bone. I've just turned on x-ray mode so we can see through the bone to make this a little bit easier. We also need to extrude a bone from the top, so pressing E and Z we're going to extrude one straight up, again keeping it in line with our original bone. I'm going to unparent this by pressing Alt P and I'm going to parent this larger bone to the smaller bone here. We tap into pose mode we can see that this bottom control is moving this regular bone. Now I'm just going to quickly rename these bones. Now that the bones have been renamed I'm going to set up the constraints that are going to allow us to move these bones and move the middle bendy bone. So to start off I'm going to select the end bone, shift select the middle bendy bone and press ctrl shift c and select a stretch to constraint. If we move this bone here we can now see the sort of setup that we're after but it doesn't quite look like a normal bendy bone and that's because we need to change the bones visibility so in the armature properties tab we're going to scroll down to viewport display and change it from octahedral to b bone now this is something that you'd normally see but it's actually quite hard to select this bottom control and we can resize it in two ways first way is by pressing ctrl shift alt and s and that'll scale the bone out and the second way is if we head over to the bendy bones tab underneath display size we can change these values here and that'll just change the display size of the bone we're missing some geometry here so we can select the middle bone and increase the segments just like that i'm going to give it 10 and you can see that as we move our bones around our bendy bone moves and squashes and stretches along with it one thing we're missing is the behavior that when we rotate the controls our bendy bone bends along with it now to do this it's under the bendy bone settings and if we scroll down to where it says start and end handle we change these values to both the tangent and select the start and end control we renamed earlier respectively now if we rotate our setup we get the exact thing that we're expecting to see now this is a great initial bendy bone setup, but we're actually going to push this even further. So to create the rig stacking effect, we want to tab back into edit mode and duplicate this setup. So selecting the middle bone, we can press shift D to duplicate. With it selected, I'm just going to press ctrl alt shift and S to resize it so that we can select it a lot easier. We're also going to right click and subdivide it. So now that we have two bones, we also need a third control and the third control needs to be aligned to the second bone. So I'm just gonna select the second bone, Shift D to duplicate it, and again, Control Shift R and S to resize it. We also don't need the subdivisions, so I'm gonna change the subdivisions back down to one, and then I'm also gonna move the tail down just so that it's a little bit smaller. If we tap back into pose mode, we can remove the constraint that's on this first bone here by going into the bone constraints tab and deleting it. We still need to set up our stretch two constraints, but it's going to be easier if we just add a brand new one. So again, stretch two constraint, and for our object, we are going to want to select this middle control, which I haven't renamed. You can see now that if we move it, we get this weird error, and that's because we need to separate it from the hierarchy. So with the middle bone selected, you want to press Alt P and clear the parent. If we head back into pose mode, we can see that the bone is behaving semi-correctly. We just need to add the rest of the constraints. So we need to do the same for the second bone, stretch to constraint, and we're going to stretch it to our end control. Now if we move our setup, the middle bone doesn't follow along. Now to do that, we're going to need to create an offset control. So tab back into edit mode, press shift D to duplicate, and again resize, control, alt, shift, and S, just so that it's easier to select in our viewport. 
I'm actually going to go over to the outliner and rename this mid control offset. Now we need to parent our mid control to this offset. So select the mid control, shift select the offset, control P and keep offset. Now we can add our constraint to this control. So making sure that the offset is selected, we're going to want to select a copy transforms constraint and the constraining object is going to be our first bendy bone. Now that makes the control jump right to the bottom and that's because we need to adjust this head and tail length. Since we've only made two bones, we can set this to 0.5 and that puts it exactly in the middle where we need it to be. Now if we go back in and move these controls, the middle control follows along but it doesn't follow along with the curve. Now that can be adjusted back in the constraint option by clicking this button which allows it to follow along with the curve of the bendy bone. Now there's still something that's off and that's because we haven't adjusted our tangents in the duplicated bone. So if we go back to the bendy bone settings and we can see that the start control is correct but it shouldn't be pointing to the end control, it should be pointing to the mid control. And again with this one, the end control is correct but the start control should be pointing to the mid control. And with that done, we should have our correct setup all following the right orientation. Now this can be quite an eyesore to look at and there's a lot of things that we don't need to see all at once. Mainly our driver bendy burn setup here and our offset control. And we can get rid of these by selecting them both and pressing shift and M and assigning them to a new bone collection. I'm going to name this bone collection drivers and in the bone properties tab we can remove these bones from our initial, initial bone group and just hide this drivers layer. So now that we can only just see the bones that we need. The next thing to do is to add our scaling. But we can see if we scale our bottom control, it's giving us some behavior that we don't quite want. And we're going to create another offset control to counteract this. It's edit mode, shift D to duplicate. I'm not going to resize it because we are actually just going to hide it straight away. In the outliner, we're going to rename our start control to start control original. And then this is our original start control. And we're going to rename this start control just to start control. Now with our original control selected, we can add into pose mode and we need to add two constraints, a copy location and a copy rotation. The target object to be our start control for both of these. Now, if we select our start control, we can move and rotate our rig, but scaling doesn't affect the rig. Now to avoid confusion, we can select our original bone and add it to our bone collection by either pressing shift M and adding it here or making sure it's selected, go into pose, bone collections, move to collection and drivers. Now to set up our scaling control, it's actually very simple. If we go into our bendy bone settings, we can actually adjust the scale X and scale Z controls. And that's actually what we're going to manipulate in order to stretch our rig. Now the wire control stretches along the length of the bone and that's something we don't want. So we're going to ignore that and just use the scale X and scale Y. Now these are going to be driven by our control object. Because we're not using the scale Y, we can select them all, hold Alt and select the padlock next to the scale Y and that will lock the scale Y on all of these controls. Now to set up the drivers, all we need to do is right click, select copy as new driver and in our bendy bone settings, paste as new driver under the scale X. We're going to do the exact same for the scale Y, copy as new driver and paste as new driver. And if we scale the control, the bendy bone now gets scaled along with it. We're just going to do the exact same for the rest of the controls. So copy as new driver. This time we're going to select the scale out X, paste as new driver. Now for the Z, paste as new driver and this is the bottom bone done i'm just going to repeat the exact same steps for this top bone now with our drivers all set up we scale all the bones we can see that this is the exact type of behavior that we want and the last thing we need to set up is our scaling moving across the length of the bone this is easily set up and what we're actually going to do is set up another driver that's going to be moving this head and tail slider now to keep this simple, I'm going to put this driver on the middle control. So if we select in pose mode and head over to our bone properties panel, scroll all the way down to custom properties and select add new. 
We can rename this to something like volume slider and set the default value to 0.5 because that's the default value in the constraint. I'm going to set the min and max to 0.1 and 0.9 just so that we don't get any weird scaling when we move right to the top and right to the bottom. With all that done, we can press OK and we can see it here underneath our bone properties option. Setting up this driver is going to be exactly the same. We're going to copy as new driver and then select the middle offset under our outliner. Head over to the bone constraints tab and where we've got the head and tail slider. We're going to right click and click paste driver. Now you can see if we adjust this, the bone moves up and down. And now if we scale it, it moves up and down too. The beauty of this is no matter how you deform the base line, moving the volume control will always follow that base curve. Now for sticking around all the way to the end, you can actually download this complete setup for free and I'll give you the link in the description below. This is just one of a million different ways that you can rig a character in Blender. But there is one technique that absolutely nobody is talking about and that's how to rig a character without a rig at all. And you can find out exactly how to do that in this video here.